Welcome ladies and gentlemen, a quick video, Sanimox released an article called Update 28 Combat Preview and Developer Update. Basically what they're going to do in Update 28. From Brian Wheeler, PvP and Combat Lead. Today we would like to present to you what the combat team has been focused on for Update 28. As always, please be aware these are just the current proposed adjustments and are subject to change during the upcoming PTS cycle. Most of the times things stay like because they don't have time to change too much. On top of a substantial amount of new item sets coming with this patch, the team has been focused on making the major and minor system more performant, as well as some adjustments to frost stuff and critical calculations. I'm always scared when I read performant because when I compare performance from last year to this year, it is worse, latency-wise. First off, let's talk about the major minor system. Original, originally, buffs and debuffs were designed as standard abilities, meaning they had to go through the same calculations as all abilities. As you have been moving towards making combat more performant, <laughs> we identified this is a key area where we could get better performance due to how prevalent buffs and debuffs are in battle, so that is true. When you look at your character stat sheet, when you're in combat, there's like millions of buffs and debuffs in your character sheet. It's crazy. And that obviously causes a lot of load on the server to keep track of these things. They're not wrong there. As such, we are shifting the buffs debuff system so they are calculated on the server much in the same way as sprint and block. With major minor effects no longer being standard abilities, they will be more performant per calculation as they won't go through the same process as other abilities during a fight. This hard coding of majors, minors will also make them less prone to incorrect stacking and mismatch values. So I do like that they like that they touch the major and minor system. I feel like let's take vulnerability. I think minor vulnerability is like eight percent. Major vulnerability is like 30%. That's too much. So maybe minor is going to be 8%, major 16, or maybe 5% minor, 10% major. That would be a pretty big hit to certain classes, like the necro, major vulnerability, and stuff like that. But on the other hand, I think it's kind of needed. So yeah, we will see. I'm not really worried about what uh like balance impact it will have i'm just worried what performance impact it will have they keep saying more performant but last time when they introduced sprint and block change the desync's gone crazy and we are still worse off than last year so will things just break more <laughs> again like do we want that i don't know During this change, we also adjusted buffs, debuffs to bring them more in line with our standards for item sets and abilities. This was also combined with the overall goal to increase sustain, decrease damage done and increase damage taken. Yeah. Players with builds that aren't 100% optimized will see an increase in power while players utilizing all major miners at once in coordinated efforts will see a decrease in power. That makes sense. Again, I don't really see it as a big deal. I do think the major and minors are a little bit overtuned. At least the majors are kind of overtuned. Like the damage mitigation and the extra damage you can get is just crazy. So I know a lot of people weren't super happy about this, but it's not that big of a deal. There will be other things that will boost our damage. I'm really just concerned. I just hope it doesn't break performance even more. It's so bad right now, latency-wise. For Frost stuff, my favorite. I hate I hate Frost stuff tanking. It's a we looked at the prior goals where magical users could tank in PV and PvP scenarios. We found that many of the tools provided by Frost Staff abilities either did not hold up to other tanking abilities or directly conflicted with other destruction stuff abilities and created some pain points in dungeons. This in turn led us down the path to give the Frost of greater viability for doing things other than tanking. The end result was a focus on two changes. Give Frost Staff users more flexibility to fill the role of a tank. And also give Frost Staff users the opportunity to better fill the roles of support or DPS.
my main problem is, especially for new players, you go to the game and you see, okay, destruction stuff, skill line. And then a lot of people like Frost Mages, they use Frost stuff, and now you're supposed to be a tank. Why is it in the destru destruction stuff skill line? It just feels like R Rubble made this change like two years ago or three years. He woke up on a Monday morning and then it was like, yeah, let's fuck with Frost stuff. <laughs> it's good that they touch it, but it should, if they want to use it for tanking. When we block with the Frost stuff, give us like a Frost Wall that pops up. Then it makes sense again, right? Because like the ice frost wall will protect you. But at the moment it just looks silly when you block with your stick and it gives you the same damage mitigation like a shield. A good example of this is following of this is the following upcoming adjustments. Lowering the damage done by Wall of Frost. It was already the worst, okay? Let's uh, compare to Wall of Flame and Shock, sure. Removing snare. Removing oh okay. That's good, I hate snares, it's frustrating, so uh, I, that's a good change. Casting Wall of Frost will create a damage shield on you and up to 5 other nearby group members. That absorbs projectiles. That sounds a little bit OP, but okay. So it's really supposed to see like a support weapon, but then it just doesn't fit into the destruction stuff skill line in my opinion. They gotta think. It's weird. That sounds a little bit OP, but we will see how the values will be. It's gonna be interesting. Unstable, like that's gonna help a lot bolstering health. It's basically like a free Ebon Armor set or something like that, probably. Unstable Wall of Frost will apply a weaker version of the damage shield when the ability ends. Okay. In terms of reducing some pain points at Frost stuff users and their groups, we will be removing the auto taunt from Tree Focus. Thank God. It's again mostly an issue for new players, they don't read tooltips, then they wear a frost stuff, do, a, do heavy attacks, and they get taunt, and they're like, what's going on, and everybody gets angry. Communication. The taunt from frost stuff will instead reside in frost clench, and it'll taunt the enemy for 15 seconds. Okay. Is that 15 meters range? Or is, I think so, eh? We believe these changes, along with several others in the destruction skill line, will help bring some parity between the free damage options for our staff users and give greater flexibility to that weapon choice. Again, it's called destruction stuff skill line, not support block skill line, but that's just my take on it anyway. When it comes to critical damage, critical chance and critical resist, we have started to get a tighter grip on these bonuses in our efficiency standards and have begun sourcing more of them in the game to counter each other. While this naturally balances itself in PvP scenarios, that is not the case in PvE situations. This already... well, Malakov kinda took care of that, I guess. This already powerful stat is slowly creeping up in power with each update and global increase in damage. That is only... The case because Sanimax keeps releasing broken OP sets. Elemental Catalyst. It buffs the, the critical damage of your whole group by a stupid amount. Of course you're gonna get even more ore damage because Sanimax is releasing broken ass sets. Another change they recently made, like a few patches ago, the Minor Prophecy, Minor Savagery, they went from 3 to 6%. So the whole group gets 6% extra spell and weapon crit. That's a lot. Like, why does it need to be 6? It could just be 1.5 or like 2. But that seems to not be an issue at all, I guess. Anyway. The main cause of this imbalance is the ease of access to gain critical chance in our game. We have a large amount of passive crit and from passive abilities, armor. Yeah, light armor gives like 10% crit, champion points gives another 10. And the base chance. On top of this, the raw standard of crit chance is higher than other DPS stats, which results in stacking crit being incredibly powerful. Yes. True. Due to this, certain classes scale more effectively in group content, resulting in just stack X in our end game meta. While this is somewhat mitigated in PvP with critical resistance, <laughs> we still hear a large number of complaints about the line certain classes tether on 
in terms of balance in PvE. Yeah. But again, I don't really think the crit rating or chance itself is the issue, it's just they keep releasing overpowered sets. Good groups will take this cheese set and use it. Other groups might not know and then they will just lose so much damage. And that's where they need to look at. But if somebody creates sets that doesn't play endgame, how is he supposed to know how to balance these sets? But anyway, as such, we have created a new combined stat for critical chance, which is a combination of spell and weapon crit. Okay, that's cool. This means if you see an item that grants 106 critical chance, it's giving you both spell and weapon crit. That's another thing they could change. Nobody knows what this number means. Change it to percentage, how hard can it be? With this change, we are adjusting many sources of critical chance, so they grant the new stat. This also results in fewer effects you need to track on your character. We are making several other adjustments to individual stat facets, such as reducing the amount of critical chance you can get from champion points. That's good, that's fair. And lowering the value of Thief and Mundu and... Prisa what? Update 27, they buff Precise from 7% to 8.4 and then 3 weeks later they nerfed it down to like 7.2% again and now they want to nerf it again? Resources well spent. What, like, I don't understand why they keep touching things 10 times. It's so much lost uh, work time. Just t do it right, touch it once. But they seem to buff nerf, buff nerf, buff nerf. Like maybe somebody's bored there that doesn't have any work to do. I don't know. But it's weird. You know this is only a small step in the larger picture of combat regarding criticals. Which we plan to continue in update 29. We believe these changes will bring about better experiences. The thing that will bring better experiences is a working game. That doesn't have poop performance. Maybe this will help a little bit. At least the major minor stuff we will see. Over the past several updates, we have been running a test where the only available. Uh huh. Wait, wait, wait where was. Okay. We okay. Lastly, as a little bonus not mentioned in the beginning of the post, let's talk about Battleground queues. Over the past several updates, we have been running a test where the only available queue is the solo queue. While we have seen Battleground partici participation fluctuate from update to update, we have not seen a considerable change in overall population. We also have heard you loud and clear. The playing with your friends in battlegrounds is sorely missed and we are going to test reintroducing the group queue with update 28. This means there will still be a solo option, nice, where you only five players who queue the solo and we will also be adding the group queue option. However, the group option has a twist, you don't have to be in a group to queue for it. You can be solo, duo, trio or have a full group. Yeah. When you do, be aware that you will be at the mercy of the players joining as pre-made groups as well. Due to this change in our Battlegrounds queue options, you will be limiting the queue choices to just these two. You will also no longer be able to choose a game type. Yeah. So everybody's gonna play, love playing its favorite Chaos Ball. This is to reduce the risk of further splintering the queue on top of the group and so on. Yeah. That's a problem, right? Like a game like, I don't know, Call of Duty, Fortnite, they have millions of players so you can split queues. There's not a lot of people in the battlegrounds, maybe two, three, four hundred. So the more splits you do, the harder it will be to find people to play together. So that's actually smart. We look forward to seeing you all back in groups in the battlegrounds and we will continue to monitor the feedback and participation after this change goes up with update 28. I actually don't know when the PTS, is it in like a month? Probably, yeah. It's not that far out. I feel like the new patch just came out. Bam. PTS. Let's go. <laughs> so just to summarize. I like group versus solo queue. That's smart. Let's see if it actually works. And let's see if there's enough people. Because that's probably the biggest problem. There's just the player base is not big enough in Battlegrounds. The crit stuff. I feel like they missed the mark here a little bit. They blame a lot of things. That are partially responsible, but they seem not to blame the completely broken, overpowered sets that they keep introducing, that they are mostly responsible for power creep. Because these seem to be totally fine, for whatever reason. Frost stuff, I, like I said, I do hate frost stuff tanking. It's just 
dump it's a destruction stuff skill line and we do blocking soup like it just doesn't match put it somewhere else okay or at least when you block give it a frost wall like kind of like a shield wall so people know oh okay this is this is used for defensive because of course new players can't figure out that you can block with a goddamn stick in your hand especially it's like the same efficiency as a shield it makes no sense very counterintuitive major minor system i don't mind the balance changes i actually think it is a good op like it's good what they do uh, tuning down the major minor a little bit maybe introducing a lot of other buffs into the system i'm just afraid because they make so much changes to it that it will just break performance even more we will see how this goes yeah. There's probably a lot more new sets and all that stuff we will see. They didn't say when the new PTS cycle shows up, but probably soon. So we'll see how it goes. One more thing. EzoHub, EzoHub.com We will launch the site soon. I will announce it like on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, everywhere. Pretty much area, Instagram, all my accounts. You can see them up here or in the description below. This site will combine SO sets, skillbook and housing all together and it will have things like you will on the front page when there is an event on it will show you if there's twitch drops on it will show you if there's a luxury vendor what items golden vendor it will show you what are the pledges and all that stuff it will have a lot of cool features if you want to give feedback or suggestions you can always join our discord I will have a planned features list because we have a lot of things that we will introduce later on. The sites up here will still stay. We're probably gonna swap or like redirect these to the new site somewhere next year. Because we still want to add a few more things. We haven't managed to port all yet. Just as a FYI, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the juicy like button. Thanks for watching and see y'all soon. Bye.